Hi, and welcome to my tutorial on Euclid's Elements, Book 8. In this tutorial, we are going to be working on Proposition 20. So what does Proposition 20 state? It states that if A, C, and B are in continuous proportion, then A and B are similar plane numbers. Now, if you recall, a plane number means that A can be constructed by multiplying two other numbers, and B can be constructed by multiplying two numbers, and the fact that they are similar means that P is to Q as I is to J. So let's start our proof. So we're only starting off with A, C, and B, where they are continuously proportional. So let us construct uh, two numbers, D and E, where the least ratio, D to E, is equal to the ratio of A to C, which is equal to C to B. And we do that using Proposition 33 of Book 7. So if D to E is equal to A to C, then if D measures A by some factor of F, then E measures C by some factor of F. Now, because this is Euclid, um, he makes a distinction between um, units and numbers, or measures and numbers. So I'm trying to be as true as I can to the actual translation from Heath. So we construct the number f by saying that if d measures a f times, then the unit 1 measures f f times. Like I said, this seems a bit redundant in our modern math, but I'm trying to stay a little bit true to um, Euclid's proofs. So we basically have f is now a number and not a um, measure or something. Not sure what. All right, so if d measures a f times and 1 measures f f times, then a is equal to f times d. And a is a planar number. Similarly, we can do this for um, B. So we have that D measures C and E measures B. We set capital G equal to little g times 1. And we have that B is a planar number and it's equal to G times E. This is in the proof, but it's a bit of circular reasoning. reasoning. He states that because of this, that, and the other, that AC, the ratio of AC is equal to um, the ratio of D to E. But in actual fact, we started off with constructing the ratio of D to E so that it equaled A to C. So yeah, little circular reasoning there. So what we have here is we have C is equal to F of E and B is equal to G times E. So if we remove the E, we can see that the ratio of C to B is equal to the ratio of F to G. So the ratio of F to G is equal to the ratio of C to B. But we have that C to B, the ratio of C to B, is also equal to the ratio of D to E. So F to G is equal to D to E or inversely, the ratio of D to E is equal to F to G. Again, we're just substituting that CB for DE, since we've already established that they are equal. And now that we have this ratio, we can um, do the alternatively or cross multiply or however you want to phrase it. From Proposition 13 of Book 7, we know that if d to e is equal to f to g, then the ratio of d to f is equal to e to g. So now we have that a and b are both plane numbers, and the ratios of d to f is equal to the ratio of e to g, so a and b are also similar plane numbers. And thus we have concluded our proof. If we have three numbers, A to C is equal to C to B, in other words, they're continuously proportional, then A and B are plane numbers, and A is proportional to B.